Hello and welcome to this in-depth discussion of an operator digital transformation in their customer experience. Today I'm joined by Cellcom and Capgemini and we're going to talk in depth about the journey they've just finished. I'm going to hand off to Randy and Sumit to introduce themselves and then we're going to ask some questions about the progression that both companies have been through in undertaking this journey. Randy, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Randy and I'm uh, from Cellcom. I am the director of digital for Cellcom and I drive the digital strategy and direction and I take care of all the digital channels that serves our customer, frontliners and dealers. Thank you for having me on this call. Welcome. Sumit. Uh, I'm Sumit Nurpuri. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Capgemini in Southeast Asia and Hong Kong. Uh, very actively involved in uh, transformation of telcos to digital ecosystem enablers. And I was the engagement executive for the transformation Capgemini has been doing with Cellcom the past few years. Very glad to be here. Good to see you. And of course, I'm Hugh Weehazi, the Vice President for IoT and Telecommunications within IDC uh, across Asia Pacific. Um, so to kick off, I'm going to start off with Randy. Um, in our um, carrier digital transformation spending guide, we estimate that across Asia Pacific, operators will spend around $2.5 billion annually on DX programs by 2023. Randy, how did Cellcom build the business case to justify the investment in digital tools and improve customer experience? And what were the key outcomes of that uh, investment? Um, in preparing for the business case, we first asked ourselves this question. How do we enable our future unassisted channels to drive an awesome customer experience and be the primary channel of engagement, which we know would lead to cost savings over time? So the first thing was to set the ambition. And the ambition statement that we arrived at was to become the most inspiring digital organization by 2020 by delivering an awesome customer experience. So, and then there were five strategic pillars um, that we that were centered upon um, the approach, which uh, the digital tools and platforms must deliver ease of service management. There must be transparency and control. Um, there must be simplicity of use, meaning human-centered design and experience. There must be capabilities for personal and contextual marketing. And lastly, the digital channels that we build must create an ecosystem for low need um, for support. We then ideated upon a three-year roadmap uh, to build capability, boost engagement, and on the third year, bank on the ROIs. After that, we embarked uh, on a hunt for a partner who shared our vision. And this is where Capgemini came into the scene and together we built the narrative for intelligent channels uh, using um, AI and bots. Uh, we put together an integration strategy for our data lake for personalization capabilities, built an end-to-end -end experience um, design of digital onboarding modules and curated the, the resources needed to build a telco in an app and presented that to the investment committee. Now, to answer the second part of the question, there was an OPCO-wide initiative from Axiata to measure all of its uh, operating uh, companies against a digital telco index. And some of the metrics include the percentage of digital grossets, the percentage of digital rechargers, TNPS and RNPS improvements, and um, lastly, the uh, percentage of reduction of transactions in assisted channels. We paired the business case with these metrics, set the targets, and laid out a plan to achieve. Oh, brilliant. Sounds great. Sumit, I'd like to come to you now. Um, in our operator transformation survey from 2020, we found that about 90% of operators find it a challenge to automate operations and processes in, in their urge to become more efficient and deliver that extended customer value. Now, what expertise and experience did Capgemini bring to bear in enabling the Cellcom solution? 
a great question, Hugh. And, and before I come to this specific expertise and experience uh, Capgemini brought, perhaps I'll establish some context by speaking about Capgemini's experience of doing global transformations. And what we've seen over the years are that many organizations are still struggling to turn their investments into business successes and, and into achieving the ROI that they, they perhaps uh, envisage. The first is the difficulty for organizations to adapt to their dizzying pace of change of technology. So the speed of, of execution lags how quickly technology is changing. So by the time organizations are doing an omni-channel experience, we're already talking about IoT and intelligent automation. The second thing is business model disruptions in many industries are challenging the traditional value chains. And telcos are a great example of that. We've seen how that business has changed. And third, uh, organizations were overly optimistic and have now realized the magnitude of the challenge, uh, coupled with the increasing expectations that uh, customers, employees, uh, and the markets have from them. So what would be the ingredients of a successful transformation then? I'm going to call out three important ones. First, digital capabilities, uh, perhaps the most straightforward. Just the capabilities to, uh, on the technologies that are required to do customer experience and operational excellence. Second, and maybe less focused on leadership capabilities, which are about creating the necessary conditions required to drive the transformation. They include having a vision, the governance model to lead the journey, the necessary information and uh, the relationship between technology and business. Um, and most importantly, I think, engaging employees in the transformation journey. And finally, the third is user experience or, or design thinking. And that's really about designing solution for the end customer. You know, when we started in IT 20 years ago, the systems would be designed by IT. Then it moved to us asking the business for requirements. But today we've all learned that, you know, the IT business and everyone else, we need to go to the, uh, to the end, end customers and to the users. And, and that's what we're doing. So what Capgemini brings then, to come back to your question, one is the end-to-end -end capability. Not only are we uh, digital transformation uh, consultants and technology providers, we have a digital agency that does user research and design. Uh, we've got application development skills, but we also bring in uh, you know, agile practitioners who can drive cultural change. Uh, number two, I think, is all of the expertise and experience that comes from other industries. Today, again, uh, you know, if we did what we did, we'll get what we got. We need to do things differently. And what we need to do is look at the digital masters in other industries and bring them to the operator. And this is something that Capgemini is able to do with, with the sort of breadth of experience we have of working with other industries. And, and finally, what we pride on us, ourselves on is the collaborative business experience. To do true agile, which involves working with one team and doing commitment-driven delivery. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Randy, coming back to you, in, in that same survey I mentioned earlier, we found that the challenges around the integration of legacy systems was a major impediment to DX initiatives along with the management of competing initiatives. Everybody wants to change all at once. How did you address those issues during the project? Well, yes, you. it was a massive undertaking to get the project off the ground because there were so many moving parts. So the approach taken was to divide it into sections or to the channels, assess the gaps and apply the right execution for each. Sounds simple, but there is a lot to be done uh, and the approach uh, is, is very important as well. So for example, uh, the for our digital front-end channels where we have existing apps and web assets that were hard-coded, which made it very difficult for it to, to scale and to grow, we decided to rebuild from ground up. This meant recoding and replatforming the entire application 
but it also meant that it gives us an opportunity to redesign its user journeys and, and experiences to be more user-centered and best in class. Now, then for our second uh, or middle layer, it required an overall re-architecting of the APIs injected to become the conduit between the front layers and the back end layers, right? Now, and then the biggest undertaking was to reorganize and refactor those integration to the backend systems, which required peeling the various systems part by part and putting it together again, but with continuous regression and testing. And this is where, you know, uh, as what Sumit mentioned, the, the culture of putting it and, and doing it in a one team uh, mindset, it was very important because things would go awry and things had gone awry, but it was about how we really dissect part by part and, and really understand what it means to do the testing end to end and, and, and really put it together. Also, the other digital capabilities that were added to the project were uh, transitioning to cloud infrastructure and the revision of security standards and practices. And with it was the inter introduction of DevOps and CICD practices that was adopted first by the internal team, but soon embraced by the larger IT counterparts. Mm -hmm. To fast track and bring speed of execution to deliver the projects, we leverage uh, on our partners for these digital capabilities and expertise to help us build the technical skill sets, um, deliver uh, with better quality, and also to raise the bar of development standards. And this is where the real game changer really is, where together we, and, and motivated by the shared ambition with our partners, we were able to make the journey of transformation a little less arduous. The transformation programs and the projects were continuously communicated to the wider organization where successes and wins were celebrated and the progress were highlighted and showcased. So what was very important here was that we introduced um, a single backlog, uh, product backlog, and we heavily evangelized that to align all of the initiatives where there are competing initiatives because everybody wanted to do something to transform. But that very critical element was to align everyone uh, to put together a single product backlog. And where there are, in, there are conflicts in that, there would be forums to deliberate on the use cases that would deliver the highest business value. So that's really how we move the organization to, to adopt that slowly. Wow, brilliant. Now, when we look at uh, the, um, the assessment of transformation maturity of regional operators, we found that the measurement of progress of DX initiatives was critical to delivering a successful project. Randy, can you tell us what measures you put in place to measure the progress of the duration of the project over the three or more years that it's taken and share that progress with the broader organization? Yeah, so there were many metrics and KPIs that were set, but I'm just gonna go back to the five principles that I shared earlier, in which uh, what we marked ourselves as a means of sharing that progress or what we mean to move the maturity was on these five areas. And the first one was on the ease of service management in which we looked at what was our increased reach uh, or increased uh, activation and customization and cancellation for our customers that they were able to do it self-serve versus having to, to call uh, the call center to be able to manage their own lines. Secondly, it's about transparency and control where we looked at the uh, capabilities that we build for, the, uh, for customers to be able to check their billing information, to be able to see the itemized uh, information of, of their, their expenses, and to also use uh, auto top-ups or e-billing methods so that they are able to have more control over their accounts or the accounts of their families. Third is we measured ourselves against simplicity of use. Uh, this meant we really looked into um, app ratings of our, our app, where we look at it weekly, monthly, um, quarterly, on what our rating is and on what customers are saying about uh, the, the application that they are using to engage with us, right? And this can also be seen through the number of app downloads that we are receiving. 
Of course, the, the most important metric is also the TNPS scores and the RNPS scores because this really gives the, the, the deep dive information of what the customers are really saying about us. On the fourth marker is really about how we are doing in terms of personal and contextual marketing uh, where we, are, we marked ourselves against how are we able to um, target the customers for, uh, for personalized efforts or, or offers uh, and the take up rate that the customers are taking up through the digital channels versus say uh, SMS marketing, right? And lastly, it is uh, on the overall view, right? If we are seeing more transactions are happening through the, the digital channels, we measured ourselves also against the reduction of uh, calls going through the contact center. And we also measure that against how many of that is also coming through um, the kiosk and via our dealers. Now with all of that, we, we put it together and that was how we track and measure our progress uh, quarter on quarter, year on year. Perfect, thank you. Now for Randy and Sumit, um, our, our research shows that projects like this tend to take three to five years, but in organizing and executing this project, what would you say was the biggest takeaway for keeping the team focused and the overall Cellcom organization engaged? And I'd like to start with Sumit and then we'll come back to Randy. Uh, thanks, uh, Hugh. And I, I would say that, you know, the guiding principle has been nothing succeeds like success. Um, what happened at Cellcom was quite unprecedented from the start. We had a procurement process that's, that lasted only two months, which is unheard of in, in the industry. Uh, following that, the first release of the minimum viable product was three months after start. And then for the next three years, there was a release every two weeks. So that kind of action and seeing the benefits is something that's really energizing. But I would say even more important uh, was how Cellcom got everybody, all the employees involved and to collaborate and own the digital transformation. And, and I want to share an anecdote with you. Uh, when the project started, the fourth floor of the building was assigned for the digital transformation. And what the CDO did right at the start was bring in these people with access and they basically literally and symbolically uh, you know, broke down the walls. And so now instead of a floor with lots of rooms, you had really a football field. And the digital officers sort of, uh, you know, ask was that he shouldn't be able to tell who belongs to which organization. This was one team working on the transformation. I, I think that that was a fantastic sort of game changer. And, and finally, lots of communications. There was town halls, rewards and celebrations. Okay, Randy. For me, it's uh, two things. First is the continuous improvement mindset. Um, and the term that comes to mind is Kaizen. The second one is about the one team spirit. So let me just go back to Kaizen a little bit. So uh, we introduced Kaizen to the team where we, you know, for Kaizen, it sees the improvement in productivity as a gradual and methodical process. And it empowers the team to assume responsibility for their processes and improve them. Now, this is not only just something that we, uh, we, we put across to the team, but we really con continuously get the team to really own um, the stories that they build, to, to really own and, and, and take ownership of uh, the development work of the team, uh, of everything to be part of, uh, you know, even the, the KPIs and the targets that we set. So that is something that we continuously communicated and empowered the team for that. The second is really the one team uh, spirit and mindset. And that comes together as well. You know, we celebrate together as what Sumit was mentioning. We, we, we have town halls, we have rewards, and we have uh, celebrations, quarterly celebrations to, um, uh, to, to reward the, the teams, uh, not only just for their work or their commitment, but really going above and beyond and really uh, coming together and, and breaking down the barriers of between you and I. In, in this journey, it is a together team and it is that one team that really made all the difference. Brilliant. So final question. Um, we, we, we noticed that about 76% of operators have told us they'll 
embark on a project like this in the next couple of years. Um, can you both tell me whether you believe the project achieved the goals you set for it? And were there any unintended uh, outcomes from the overall effort? Brandy, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, absolutely, Hugh. Uh, if I were to look back at the state of our uh, digital capabilities we had in Cellcom and compare it with what we, where we are today, uh, it has been a massive leap. We put together some very audacious goals back then. And I'm very proud to say that we were able to exceed the bar. It wasn't a fortuitous stint, but one that was carefully planned and deeply committed to, backed with a dedicated crew to make it happen. What is equally important is the partner that we chose to be on this journey with us. And I can attribute this to Sumit and the team in Capgemini for their commitment on this transformation journey with us. Sumit, what about you? Well, first I have to say, you know, it's very gratifying uh, to hear a client say that not only were the objectives met, but they were exceeded. And, and, and that's, that's what we, uh, I suppose, we live to do. You know, I, in my opinion, uh, what changed a lot, and it's sort of been the theme of, you know, what I've been speaking about today, that what got us here won't get us there. In, in the old way that we function, we would have a transformation team and a BAU team, you know, people who do it business as usual. But today, what we've been able to do with this, with this engagement, with this program, is develop a transformation team that is BAU that can continue all the good work that's been done because we know we're gonna have more technology disruptions, we're gonna have more business model disruptions. So this work doesn't stop. So I, I, I think that would be the great achievement that you know, the, all the good work is gonna be sustained as, as, as we go on. Well, that's amazing. Thank you both for these insights and the honesty and transparency you bring to talking about this project. It sounds like it's been a major transformation for Cellcom and for Capgemini. And it's interesting when a project transforms both the provider and the customer um, in equal part. So I would like to thank uh, Randy and Sumit for their time today and all of you for attending. And if there's any further information you like, feel free to contact us uh, after the event. Thank you.